welcome to Power to the Flower. Thanks so much for being here today on my Zone 9 gardening channel. Today, we are going to be following up on the lemon tree and doing a little bit of work there. And then I also just thought it might be fun for you to see like how things are moving along here in my backyard since many of you have been watching since the beginning and we've been doing a lot of changes. So today I put together, well not today, this week I put together this potting bench and thought it would be super perfect um, as a drinks table. So I just hope that was inspirational for you, maybe helpful just to think like I can totally do this. I am not perfect as you probably saw. I put this on a little bit over to the side. These things are a bit wonky. I use too long of screws over here and they poke out in the back. The good news is it's over here so no one's ever gonna rub their fingers against. Meaning, I don't exactly know what I'm doing, but since it was my project, I felt like I could learn. And using drills and figuring it out was really fun. I feel like it worked out. It looks great. I think it's gonna be exactly what we need in terms of um, having people over and help having them help themselves to some drinks. So if you're following me on Instagram or Facebook, you have seen my recent posts about this wall, which I'll give you a bigger look at in a few minutes. Um, this has been a long time coming since last October. Lots of changes have happened back here in our yard and um, we finally finished this wall, painted it, it's looking great. And so it's like, how can we use it? And I thought it would be great to have a drinks table over here for when we're entertaining. I found a fairly inexpensive one by Bench Ride, I think. I'll put the name up. I found it on Amazon. It was unfinished wood and I thought it would just, it had a little, um, it said like soil holder sink in it and I thought that would be super perfect for a drinks table in terms of holding ice I mean you don't even have to put one of these things in you could just use that put ice in and then put your drinks in there like wine or soda or water whatever but I, I'm going to use this to have wine bottles in I'm, I have another picture that I'll be bringing out and then this one down here as well I thought that would be fun to um, you know put soda and waters and stuff like that so tonight we're actually going to be entertaining so we'll be able to try it out and see uh, uh, how we like it. One of the main issues in our new configuration is people get stuck wherever the drinks are. So we're trying to like move them along. So this is kind of in the passageway. So we thought this will move you along to the table or move you along to um, the seating area. Um, so we'll see what happens. I added these hooks as you saw. My thought there, I didn't, I don't know. I don't know, you let me know. What do you think of the hooks? I thought they are a little bit colorful and add to this kind of galvanized metal situation that I'm doing here and kind of bringing it all together with the little pops of color. Not sure what I think yet. We'll have to wait and see. What else? I really liked this upper piece as well to hold the glasses. Some of the potting benches that I saw didn't have this. They had kind of like a um, lattice on the back, which would be cool if you wanted to like hang things, um, but I'm not that creative. Also, I was looking at one um, drinks table that was much wider, probably double this. And we use tables sometimes, and I just find that the back of the table, nobody can reach anyways. So this depth, which is about um, 20 inches, is perfect. I think that's gonna be just enough to have what we need going on over here. So let's head on over to the lemon tree. I pruned this lemon tree back in March, and I wanna show you kind of the follow-up and how it's doing. All right, let's just, take a moment to make our way to the lemon tree. This is where people enter into our backyard. This is the power to the flower shed, the drinks table, and hopefully we're gonna be ushering people up these stairs that Matt just built to this area over here where the lemon tree is. So this is the lemon tree. And if you watched my pruning video back in March, then you saw how we took this tree way back using tree science as our guide. We learned about heading cuts and thinning cuts from my father-in-law, who's a pomologist, a tree scientist. And um, I have to say this tree has never looked better before. Like We've lived here for three years. It, the leaves are green. I put iron tone and fertilizer in this rock bed when I started and 
it is just growing, growing, growing. Also, it's fruiting year round, which I don't know if that's what it's supposed to be doing, but I am not complaining. So anyways, I wanted you to get the big view of the top where I did some heading cuts and we have lots of new growth. Um, let me show you the back. I don't have my videographer with me. My daughter's in school now, so I have to do it myself. Anyways, this is the side of the lemon tree, which I showed a lot of views in that March video, because you can see over here, the it's really leaning this way, but also all the growth is coming this way, and that's because of the shadow of this redwood tree. So what I wanted to do was promote growth coming out the back, and we've done that a bit. You can see in here, that there is some growth from the heading cut made down there, as well as some heading cuts made up here. Now, let me just put the camera in there and so you can have a better view. There's a heading cut there, and then all of this new growth around, and then I'm gonna go around the side. Okay, here's the other view from the other side. Maybe we can get in there a little bit easier and see what we did. So there's a heading cut right there, just chopped off the branch in the middle of the branch and a new branch grew. Then what happened? Then it looks like it naturally got chopped off, broke and another branch grew and these branches grew out the side. So we're hoping that these branches are gonna fill this in. And actually what I'm gonna do here today is do another heading cut. And again, hope for more fillage going back this direction. Um, we can see up here, there was a heading cut done here and then more growth. And this is the same one here that we just looked at in this growth. So with all of these pieces peeking up over the top, what I'm gonna do is head, head cut all of those and then kind of make it thicker and bushier in the back. Now let's look at some of the thinning cuts that we made and if they worked. I remember doing one here. I brought the branch to back to here and look no new growth this stayed this was the old one it stayed and then no new growth came quick review of what a thinning cut is so a thinning cut is when you bring a branch down to another branch so in this case i cut off a branch at this branch but i left another branch on and that's important because these leaves and the tip of this branch are sending suppression signals down to the this branch to say you don't need to grow any new branches it's totally fine just stay the way that you are it's not a hundred percent sure that no new branches will grow but it's much less likely that new branches will grow if you still have kind of an end on your branch. Okay, let me just give you another example. Okay, here are some more examples. So these are thinning cuts. There were branches poking out of here that I cut off at this branch level. But this branch still has other tips on it. So here's a tip and here's a tip and leaves. So leaves and branch tip send suppression signals down all the way down the whole branch saying you don't need to grow any new branches. So that's why it's called a thinning cut. Where a header, a heading cut, is where you take a branch and you just lop it off straight in the middle. And so now there's no more tip and no more leaves above where you chopped. And so those suppression signals are gone. And so that's going to promote new growth at the nodes of the branch that you left. Is what I wanted to do today was just take some of those top branches down and hopefully with heading cuts and hopefully again, kind of make it a rounder shape and hopefully promote some more growth here in the back. I also wanted to take up some of these ones that are no longer required because we have all this going on and that block us as we walk through this area. So let's do that. Something you 
may remember from before is that this lemon tree had a lot of crossing branches and crossing branches do not support healthy trees. So we need to get rid of this one. Unfortunately, this one has a lot of um, lemons on it and growth, but in order to promote the growth of the main um, tree stock, we need to get rid of this one. This can cause like disease and infection for the tree. So before in my last video in March, I didn't want to cut it because we didn't, we had taken so much away from the tree, but I'm going to start with that today and we'll go from there. Now, some people might be saying, what are you doing pruning in September? But in our area, it's going to be warm through the rest of September and October almost guaranteed. Um, so we're not worried about the tree getting rot or some sort of cold temperatures and inside of the um, branches and then that causing problems. It's going to be able to heal by the time cold weather strikes. So um, we can go ahead and do this right now. You can even see on this, this is the one branch that had yellow leaves on it. I don't know if that was why, but it's just a weak branch if you have crossing branches. So we need to get as close as we can down here. So I think I'm just gonna stop right there with that one. So a couple days after my prune job, my father-in-law happened to visit and he took a look at my crossing branch and said we need to take off a little bit more so that the branch that we left could widen and grow without any sort of crossing branch touching it. So he used the pruners and this knife to take away the part that was touching the um, the branch that we were leaving. The tip here is just slow and careful and he was able to remove the crossing branch without damaging the branch we were leaving. So what do you think about the, how much is left? So what we're trying to do is let this one grow, this one. Yeah, <clears throat> that'll be fine. I'm gonna take this one all the way to this branch. And so what happens is that the other branches remain. And so the original branch, I think I'm gonna to need to get thinner choppers. The original branch that we're cutting it to, it still has leaves and ends on it that send those suppression signals down to say, you don't need to grow any new branches. Let me get smaller. So let's get in there with these little things. There we go. Okay, so that kind of lightened that load. And I think maybe this one as well. All right, let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at that. So what we've done is this had a lot of stuff hanging down. And so I've just brought it up to the main branch. And so there's all these leaves and end tips still on the tree, which are hopefully going to suppress this branch that we just cut, cut the other ones to right here from growing any new branches. So we'll have to see um, how that works. And then let's just have a quick overview. I think this one probably needs a chop, doesn't it? And you can see better now what's going on back here with all of these. See how they're starting to fill this space out? And then some of these we chopped during the previous video and they're also starting to fill this back space out. So I'm just gonna cut a few more and then we'll call it 
a day, I think. Take a good look to see how everything's going. I think this one needs a chop. And I don't know if I want to take this one out as well. I'm not sure yet, so I'm going to leave it. And I want more on the back. So how can we make that happen? I'm gonna do a header on all of these, I think. And just really hope that they start growing that direction. I think I'm gonna bring this one off. Sorry, buddy. You gotta go, you're too in our path. There we go. So I think I'm gonna stop there because I mean, I do want lemons. So I think with each prune job, we take more off from where we don't want branches and but we go with the long view in, in mind. So what I'm thinking is these ones I'm eventually going to take off because they're too low and they go into the path but they have lemons on them and they're fine right now. They're not blocking anything and so I'm going to go ahead and leave those and then you know in another six months or so I'll come back and see where we are with the full growth of the tree. So I hope that was helpful for you just to kind of see how the lemon tree prune job went down back in March and then how I'm carrying on again with the long view in mind trying to get this tree back to a good shape and position and I recognize that at the end of every cut video like where I cut the tree it looks terrible. <laughs> so that's why I was really happy to show you the follow-up to show you how it bulked out, looked so great. It's been fruiting like crazy. We've had the biggest harvest that we've had yet. And it was um, just doing what it was supposed to do. So it's maybe kind of like an, an art job. I feel like an artist. I'm shaping it and making it grow. Anyway, so that's the end of this video. I hope this was helpful for you in terms of thinking about um, backyard development, fun things like drinks tables, and also um, getting on with the pruning job of your lemon tree. If you didn't catch that first lemon tree video, you can catch it up here. And um, if you're not following me on Instagram or Facebook, you can do that as well. And also don't forget to subscribe and like this video. See you next time. Bye.